last year I planted this sorghum and I was thinking, hey, this would be great for dove. Right. Uh, we got it through pheasants forever. Uh, and uh, never got to dove. It, uh, the deer wiped it out in about two weeks. So yep. we had some pretty good heads and um, it didn't get as big as what I wanted because uh, I was battling when the rain was coming. I was running out of time. So I didn't get a chance to do any pre-emergent or spray or uh, a burn on it. Right. So there's a lot of weeds in there, but it came out pretty good. I, I thought it, I thought it did a good job, but I don't know how big, how much would you say I've tilled up here? Maybe a quarter, maybe a half. Yeah, no yeah. more than that. So I'm interested in doing some dove honey. Yep. Is that enough? Well, let's start off by talking what a guy wants to plant or what a gal wants to plant for dove food to hunt over. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, sunflowers, whether it be uh, an expensive sunflower or just a run-of-the-mill peridovic sunflower, just a, you know, one you can go to the seed dealer and say, hey, I, I want to plant some uh, sunflowers for dove. Since you're in deer country, um, I've planted uh, dove plots since uh, the first year we had our dove season, and it's escaping me maybe uh, 11 or 12, somewhere in there. Uh, if, if, if and when the deer find sunflowers, when that, they start growing... That they, was post-Vilsack era, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> they will eat sunflowers. I've had a lot of my landowner friends say, I quit, quit planting dove plots because I can't grow sunflowers. Uh, some of our public area managers, the bios and the techs, will say, we plant them and we're close to a lake or we're close to deer habitat and the deer come out and the geese come out when when the sunflowers are this tall the geese will gnaw them off uh when I it, saw they get it last year i saw the same thing yeah when they get this tall the deer will eat them so to me it's always about size if you have you know if you could expand this and make it a little longer or bigger if you say well should i try sunflowers one year you could but knowing you're in really good deer habitat your deer will find them and they'll probably eat them and then you'll be frustrated and you'll say well, what what do I do now and I get those calls every spring hey it's June can I still do anything can I still the deer ate them to the ground and they will not regrow can I try again you could um, my second favorite is uh, is millets um, and you can plant millets fairly late you can do um, like German millet foxtail millet, proso millet, some of these seeds you see in the, the bag mixes in the in the box stores where you put them in your bird feeder and you see that little white round seed, yep. those are millets. All birds like them. Uh, fairly easy to grow, you can plant them in June, it takes about 50, 60, 70 days depending on what species you plant, and it'll be ready. Basically no herbicides other than maybe a burn down. You know, if you're tilling, probably don't even need to use herbicides because you really can't use grass herbicides because they're grass. Um, fairly easy to manage, get them up, fertilize them, do, you know, maybe do a soil test, see what you need, um, and then just mow them off. Literally mow them off and sit back by a tree or sit by a hay bale or whatever you got and harvest doves. Um, another thing you can do, and this is something that we just looked at a different field on the farm, and it's got winter rye. Um, I'm, I'm pretty famous for planting winter wheat after my dove plots. I like to have crops in the ground, soil health, um, always a living plant in the ground. So I'll do, uh, I'll double crop. I'll do sunflowers, uh, plant them in mid-May to early June. Uh, they take about 90 to 100 days to mature if you can plant sunflowers and get them to grow. Um, after we've uh, mowed a good portion of them down to get the doves coming, maybe third, fourth week of August, the opener is September 1. Uh, then we'll hunt it for two, three, four weeks and get somebody in there with a native drill and we'll drill wheat, rye, uh, oats, a mixture. So I've double cropped. I've had sunflowers, then I'm gonna have uh, food for uh, rabbits, deer, turkey, quail. In the fall, they can kind of come in and pick at some green stuff. Then the next spring, and I've had this happen personally, the next spring if we get wet and my gosh, we can't, we just physically can't do a dove plot. We can't do our, our sunflowers because it's just wet. If you have rye or wheat or any of those things, you know, maybe a, maybe a barley, you can actually let that grow and mow that off in August and have kind of your fail-safe dove plot. You can also do things in the spring. Um, let's say you want to plant a spring barley or a spring hard red wheat. You say, 
I can't plant sunflowers because I tried it one or two years and the deer obliterated. I just can't do it. I'm, I'm in too much of a deer sure. beautiful area. You can plant spring small grains. Um, so those th three things alone, sunflowers if you can do it, um, winter wheat, winter rye, if, if you didn't do that you can go in the spring and you can plant uh, early, you could plant some spring wheat, you could plant, plant some spring oats, spring barley. If that doesn't work, you're looking into June and you can go with your millet mixes. So there's always the next, where do I go from here? Okay. And they're all fairly simple. Probably the most work labor intensive would be sunflowers, um, if you want it to be. Usually when I plant sunflowers, I'm coming, I'm coming back from that winter wheat crop. So I'm, I'm in there in May and I'm using a, uh, a burn down, maybe Liberty maybe round up. I'm burning that down and I may put my, if I've got a guy or gal coming with the drill the next day, I'll probably put my pre-emerge on. Because the key with these plots, if you're a quail manager, we got common ragweed, if, you know, you got sorghum. This is a wonderful quail plot if it had a little more grain. A little bit more meat to it if it was a little bit bigger, still viable for wildlife. You can see some tracks in here. But if I'm planting sunflowers, the key with planting sunflowers, if you can do it, is as weed free as you can get. And that means no grasses, a few broad leaves are not a big deal, but if you see foxtail and stuff like that, you don't want it. Because when you start mowing that off in August to get the doves coming pre-hunt, uh, pre-season, you want to be able to have bare ground. Doves love to feed on bare ground. Will they feed on something that's been mowed and there's some duff lips? Sure, absolutely, they'll go feed on it. But if there's bare soil, if there's dirt and sunflower seeds and weed seeds laying there, they're there. They are attracted to bare soil. Watch, watch the fields when they chop corn in September, and all of a sudden there's doves there, right? Well, they can pick grain up, and they can see predators all around them. So that brings me a good. That's really a great question. So, if if we have it mowed down, and we've got a great plot for dove, do I need a blind? What's the? I mean, I'm not an expert on dove hunt. Well, I'm not either. I just go out and do it. Um, some people will put up blinds. Uh, I look back over here and I think, man, if you're doing a morning hunt or look over here, trim a few branches and, and tuck yourself in amongst the trees as long as you can get some shots. I mean, that, that'd be a perfect spot to set. Let's say you could do sunflowers. If you can do sunflowers, what I do is I don't mow all the sunflowers down. I might create a, a, a three or four row of sunflowers through the middle of the plot. So if I'm sitting in the morning, I'll sit how I orient it. This plot would be a long plot along a ridge. It doesn't matter if it's narrow or not, as long as I can shoot and I'm shooting in a safe direction. In the morning, I would be sitting over here because that's the east and I want the sun at my back. If you want to pull off an afternoon hunt, you know, you could sit over here and have some backing to the back. After the first few days, they get pretty educated. <laughs> they don't like the spinners anymore. But the beauty of dove hunting is they're a migratory bird. So they continue to come through and it's always fun because I still see doves in January in Iowa. You know, some doves stick around. It's, it's fun seeing them in November. They're on the high lines and you're like, man, that takes me back to September. Oh, I bet. I mean, I bet I have 150 dove right, right now. now. Yep. Yeah. So, so to me, I always try to align my plots. The plot I'm thinking of that I manage over where I live for some friends, uh, we're north to south. So we can hunt any sun. You know, we're sitting. I always leave some standing cover. Now, if you say, well, wonder if I don't do sunflowers, Kevin, what do I leave standing? What you might do in a place like this is just, you know, go, go sit next to a tree. Just break up your outline. You've got a tree there, you've got a tree there, a tree there. In the afternoon, I mean, these, these hay bales, these corn stalk bales, put one or two of them along the way and sit behind them, you know. I mean, just something to break up your outline. If you're sitting out in the open in a plot, once they start getting shot at, they will avoid you. It gets a little frustrating, but um, let's say you've planted uh, spring wheat or spring uh, uh, millets and stuff like that. Um, I still leave a little bit standing because then I've got grain dropping sure. all the time. So it's a, uh, you can do as little work as you want or you can go, I love sunflowers because I, I, I've hunted sunflower plots since I started hunting doves. And they are, they are to me the, if you want to say Cadillac or Lincoln Continental of the dove plots but other plots work. So if we were to take this plot and we say, we're gonna stay with sunflowers, yep. put an electric fence around it? You can, 
you yep. know, and now how tall would I need for those sunflowers to get before the deer are going to leave them alone? It's basically the bloom stage. I don't fence this farm because I, I usually go an acre that I'm talking about over where I live. We usually do an acre of sunflowers and then we'll do a deer plot right next to it. So I'm kind of flip-flopping every year. So sure. I can, you know, sunflowers take a lot out of the soil. They put down a deep tap root, so feed them. Like any other food plot, if you want to be successful, do a soil test and say, hey, I'm planting sunflowers. What do they need to do well? Sure. Uh, I don't care if the heads are this big or this big. I just don't want there to be a lot of weeds. So for me, I, I like to feed them. I like to go out and do them right. So once they get a bloom, once they're starting to bloom and open up, and that's the beauty of a sunflower plot to me, is you go out and you oh my gosh, they, they follow the sun. Beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. Um, I would do it just like I was doing any other deer plot that you wanted, if you had soybeans and you said, I, I want this for a late plot. I would do my two strands and then maybe one, um, just so they don't get in there. Once they start getting that head, anytime a plant, plant starts to mature, it's got a lot more lignin in the leaves, in the stock, they won't bother the stock. I've still seen them pick leaves off even when they start to bloom, sure. but it becomes less attractive. It's getting them from here up to about here. Okay. Um, and once they, I don't care how tall they get, I've planted them and they've got seven feet tall and I've planted them and they get this tall. Um, I don't care how tall they get, it's just somehow protecting them. And I, you know, I never even thought about the electric fence idea, but that's a, that's doable. Now do we, uh, do we double crop this one, if, sunflowers? If, if you want to, I, I do it every year. At once the sunflowers are down, I usually go with a, you could do a pea, a radish, but I usually go with a small grain like uh, I did this fall. We did it the 20th of September, so we were three weeks into the season. We had our mowed down sunflower plot, had a friend come with his six foot native no-till grass drill, and he drilled, uh, I think it was a total of 80 pounds of a mixture of winter wheat, winter rye, oats, and crimson clover. So. My oats, come up, they came up, they, they, they died with the first good freeze. My winter wheat, my winter rye, and hopefully some of my crimson will overwinter, especially if you put snow cover on the ground. A lot of times it'll overwinter. I've had it happen. So next spring, let's say the worst case scenario happens. We're wet or something happens, I can't get sunflowers. And I have my de facto dove plot already. Is it my favorite dove plot? No, no. I would rather have sunflowers. But I'm ready to go, and I've learned that lesson that even if I can't do anything in the spring and then I get into June and I'm like, man, I really want to plant my millets. And then if something happens, it wouldn't if it's wet in June and I can't do anything. I still have a dove plot ready to go. So absolutely double crop it. Okay. Absolutely. So one, uh, so now if we, so we've got what, rough, let's just say half acre. Half acre. So yep. we've got a half acre here. We can go probably, I can probably go another hundred feet probably. Well, that way? Yeah. And I could probably go a little further this way. I don't want to go that way because I don't want to create erosion problem. Absolutely. But I can probably go in a couple swipes more this way. Yep. And uh, is that enough? Is that enough to have a good couple of dove hunts? Yep. If you can get an acre, I've had guys say, well, half an acre do, well, a quarter acre do. A little bit more meat. I always say if you can if you can eke out an acre on your farm and if you're going to fence off a, a sunflower plot and be successful, I've hunted over lots of one acre plots. Now a lot of the public areas will have five, ten acre fields because we're trying to appeal to the masses. We're trying sure. to get a lot of hunters in there, which is awesome. Can you pull off two, three, four hunts in September with a one acre dove plot that you've managed correctly? Absolutely. Now will I spook off any of my uh... Any of my white-tailed deer that I, I want to be targeting? Had that question asked a lot, and from my experience, uh, my sons and I actually hunt this farm that we help manage for friends, and they hunt it. I personally get a bull hunted, which is awesome. I early muzzleloader hunted it this year, and three weeks before I did my last dove hunt, the last probably weekend of September, and what, 17 days later, there's it, it did not seem to affect it at all. And I've had friends over the years say, "You're are you crazy? You're, you're gonna blow your deer out of there. No, no, I've never seen that. I think if you were in there every hour of every day, bang, 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 bang. But I go out and do a morning, a morning hunt, maybe hunt for an hour, get out of there. It's a, I always tell guys and gals, it's a, it's a fun thing. You may only go two times. 
put a little bit of work into it. Maybe you hunt the opener. Maybe you go out a week later and hunt some of the migrators. I always look for cold fronts in September. It sounds crazy. But oh, cold front. Oh, they got cold in Minnesota. Let's go sit and watch your high lines. Watch your, like you know there's 100 plus doves on the farm right now. You know because you're seeing them, right? Yep. Do that in September. I hunt in October too. A lot of guys are like, you go dove hunt in October? Yeah, I've done it up until the second or third weekend of October. It's slower, you won't have the numbers. And sometimes the opener is slower than two weeks later. One thing doves, doves do not like, and this sounds oxymoron-ish, right now you got doves here, and we got snow on the ground, and it's January. Probably northern doves that have migrated here, and this is tropical to them, right? Sure. Um, the first doves that are raised here, once we get down in the 30s or 40s in September, the urge is to migrate, to go. And I've had years on the opener where I've shot two or three doves off of a plot, and you're like, well, we'll go a week later. And you see them kind of congregate, and you see a cold front coming, you go back out, and you have a fantastic hunt. So once you have a plot in place, it's great. And then about mid-September, whenever you see a rain imminent coming in the forecast, you're like, okay, we've had two or three good hunts. It's time to drill in winter wheat, winter, wheat, winter rye, triticale, some annual clovers. You could do, you could probably get away with doing some radishes and, and uh, turnips. They're not gonna get bulbish, but you'll get some veg. So yeah, you can turn it into a de facto deer plot. All right, so one last, uh, one last item. So when, when do we mow down the uh, sunflowers? Okay, conventional wisdom tells you if you've got a big enough plot that you start mowing 15th of August to the end of the season. What I generally do, there's no magic date. Um, if I have an acre, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave a tenth of an acre up for a hidey hole, a sit, you know, a place to sit. I might leave two rows on the outside or I might leave two rows in the middle so I can flip flop my, my sun field. Um, I've mowed on the 31st of August and go out the next morning and hunt if my sunflowers are not mature yet. This year I had to replant, I had a I'd say a 90% crop failure on my sunflowers. We had a beating rain, four inch rain, uh, drilled them, had a friend come drill them uh, May 15th, and two weeks, three weeks later, I had one popping up here and there. It pounded them in the ground. They're a little bit weak emerging. They like warm weather too, but I like to get them in because you think 90 to 100 days. If I go 90 days from May 15th, that's August 15th. They're starting to get ripe. One of the things I'll, I'll if you've never done it and you've never planted sunflowers, the goldfinches, our state bird, of them. They will be in there and it's just a it's just a plethora of goldfinches and some guys get upset, oh they're eating all my sunflowers. Well, once they're there, the doves are there. I, I've not even started mowing yet and if I've got bare enough ground, I've done a good weed control management job, I've got doves feeding in there. So I would say the third week, the 21st through the 28th, go in and mow it down. One little danger thing I'll tell you about, it's not danger but it's a, it's a caution. If you see a bunch of rain coming, you can get sunflower seeds to germinate if you mow oh, okay. too early. Yeah. So I always go, mm, if I can mow in the last week before the season and they're already in there, it, I just made it easier for them. I just made the road easier to drive down. And it's awesome. it's it's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. You betcha. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.